I'm going to talk to you about kite photography with a Raspberry Pi. Essentially what this is, is we take a Raspberry Pi that I have on a very light frame with a power supply which you connect over USB. We have the Raspberry Pi camera connected to it. And on a good day, uh, it'll start taking photos. Um, actually, you can start passing it around and just sort of see, like, it's not, it's, it's not great hardware, but it works. Uh, most of the time when I touch two electrons together, it's just like a big electrical spark comes off. It's, it's not good. So this is me. Um, I'm on Twitter. That's my email address. If you go to kite.zaxi.info, I have all the links and other stuff available. Um, all the photos are on my Flickr page too, except for the two that I stole. So, um, so we take this really light device with a Raspberry Pi power supply and the camera and the sense hat. Um, we put it up in the air uh, as we as one does with the light. And this is the actual kind of use. So nothing too huge. But it works well. And essentially by a cron job, every minute or so we take a photo. Um, the way that we do this, though, is we act, we're actually cheating a little bit to make sure that we try to take better photographs. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But it's just a really cool, fun outdoor hobby, which has something to do with computers. So it's a lot of fun. So, it is a really fun thing. Um, I used to fly, fly kites when I was a teeny tiny, and, and now I do it as an adult, and it's still fun. Um, one of the other reasons why I like doing this is because it's legal inside the DC Special Flight Rules area. If you've never heard that before, that's probably because you're not a pilot. So basically what that means is that the DC area is really restrictive with what the FAA permits to fly in the air, and that's a good thing because you don't want people flying around the lighthouse and the Capitol that are authorized to do so. Uh, so basically a lot of the UAV drones or something like that, which are light, but could still present a potential risk, um, they basically prohibit that. Um, so, uh, but they allow kites. So this, that's one of the reasons I was thinking of doing it. It's, it's a really fun hobby. So this is my personal attempt to do this. They're particularly with respect to um, people that are interested in looking at old buildings. They actually do this a lot because it's considered safe, safer than using UAVs. Um, so, there is an actual community that does this mostly based out of California to look at their own uh, systems there instead of using uh, UAVs because there's actually a little bit more restrictions than UAVs in California too. So I'm a little odd duck in the way that I've done this. I haven't seen too many other people that have been successful doing this with the Raspberry Pi. There was one person that was featured, but they were just looking straight down at the ground. This sensor basically allows you to look at whatever direction uh, it, it hangs at, so it's a little bit different. And it's, it's all good. Um, so what you need is you need a Raspberry Pi. I recommend the A plus or the I zero. Um, the reason for this is because they, they're the ones that have the least power requirements as compared to um, the B three because actually that actually requires a lot of power that you can easily powered with a USB backpack, which is that little blue thing that's attached there, that it's the power, it's the power supply. And you can't super do that with 3D easily. It's basically, it will start up and then it will reboot, and then it will reboot, and it will reboot, and you, you actually get to work. So either an A plus or the Pi Zero would work fine. Um, the Raspberry Pi camera, we have that as well. 
the sense hat that allows us to look to see what direction and what acceleration the camera is taken, his, his camera is pointing, and um, the SD card. For the rig, I've tried a lot of different designs. Um, I might next year actually try a 3D printed one, but I haven't decided if I actually want to use Forge at this point to do that. Um, but you need a couple of bolts, you need a kite, you need a rope. Um, basically, you want the rope that supports uh, higher uh, strength because you're going to be, that allows the kite to be pulling out a certain, because as the kite goes out, it basically is pulling the kite string and you need to make sure that the, the kite string doesn't break. So you want to have something that's reasonably high on the kite string. Um, you also need the, the large gauge wire. So as you're looking at the box, which, which is making its way around somewhere, oh, there it is. So you'll, you'll see at the top, there's, there's a little piece of bronze, bronze wire. And what you do is, actually, I'm going to come over here for just a second just to show you. Cool, thank you. So the way that it goes up on the kite, is you have this bronze wire. You sort of wrap it, like if this was a string of the kite, you wrap, wrap it around like this, and it will just sort of go up as long as it's tied reasonably well. It takes, you, you, you just keep wrapping it and hope, and then you cross your fingers, make sure there's no one underneath it, and you should be okay. Oh, sorry, let's now on this side. The, the nail polish is for if you're using the screws and you don't want the screws to move as they're in the air when you're attaching it to an acrylic. Uh, if you paint it with nail polish, the, the screws won't move. So it's just a little trick to make sure that things remain permanent. The first version of the code was basically a cron job, where cron job is a way of Automatically, um, every minute, uh, uh, running a command, which was basically the recipe still grabbing a picture of the photo, and that works. It's not perfect. You'll get a lot of bad photos that way because it, the if you know, the Raspberry the kite platform is entirely stable, so if the wind is shaking it around a lot. If you're just doing it by a cron job, sometimes, actually most of the time, you'll be getting, getting a photo that you have some movement. So you may only have like one or two photos that actually make sense. So that made some improvements. So this was about five years ago. This was the first version of the platform. And this actually was a piece of uh, board, uh, cardboard, essentially. Uh, was it the painter's, was it paint, painter's board or something like that? Canvas, there you go. It's a piece of canvas that I basically uh, had a little screw and make sure that all the things stayed in. And it did work. Um, but it had weak physical connections that sort of allowed things <coughs> to work. So it's somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean at this point. So. It happens. Um, there was also no code backup. I didn't really write down or document what I was doing, so that was something that I did for the next version as well. Uh, the second version, this was my first attempt at doing something with laser cutting. Uh, that, that was fun. Um, it was able to securely attach everything to the platform. You will notice I now have a nice, large, if found, please call sticker. Uh, so, and it did work. That's actually a photo of my wife uh, at a local park. Um, this is the third version. This was also an acrylic platform. The issue with this one is that it crashed and sort of broke into a million parts with a really hard landing on the ground. So I decided to move away from acrylic because even though it was a lightweight platform because it was so brittle, 
you don't want to have anything that's sort of attached to the wire that's sharp hitting for the ground quickly. Just too many bad things can happen. So that's the reason why last year I did a paper craft type of thing. So it turns out that paper is not a very strong platform. It will work uh, to a certain degree, but unfortunately if there's a rope pulling it in either direction, it will rip. So the only reason why this platform stayed together and was able to come down on a piece is, you can't really tell in this photo, but see how the USB power supply sort of goes up and around where the, the center hanger is? That was actually the only part that was keeping the kite connected together. So yeah, I had to throw that USB cable away but it did work. Uh, it's just not exactly the best solution. So the current, and, and it did work. Uh, this is a picture uh, on Cape Cod. Uh, the photo on the right is actually close to where my parents' house is. It's cool. Uh, I also wrote my first Python code. I'm a pro programmer by trade. Uh, so the reason why I did that was to do a couple of different things. Uh, I wanted to make sure that the platform wasn't shaking when I took the photo. The Sense Hat has, which is a $30 add-on for the Raspberry Pi that the Pro Foundation makes, which they put up in the space, the station, the bus going around here, which I forgot the name of it. The ISS. ISS, thank you. Um, and they have two of those up there in space, and they're sort of getting all these different uh, the senses, and it works. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool, actually. Um, so in addition to being able to take the detect if something is shaking by the accelerometer, uh, it can also record the temperature and barometric pressure and humidity. The reason why you want to do that is it can actually, because of the fact that air pressure is, is, uh, is actually a liquid, and or air is like a liquid. I'm not sure exactly what the nomenclature is. Regardless, if there's more air molecules on the, on, on the ground as compared to in the sky because of gravity. So because of that, if you know the air pressure, you can know how high off the ground uh, something is. So this is how the shake detection works. This is the only time I'm going to show any math. So if you're panicking, don't worry. But if you quickly take the accelerometer uh, information, you'll get information on the x, y, and z axis as to how fast it's moving in a given direction. If you take it again and, uh, and then subtract the difference, square it, and to then take the square root of the difference, you'll get a number between zero and a very large number as to how much shake there is on the platform. It's basically normalizing three dimensions into one, if I recall the math correctly. So it works. Um, and I should also say that I did not, was not the one that actually made up this formula. I know enough math to say, yes, this makes sense, but not to actually come up with the formula. But it works. So that allows us to take, like for when I took this photo, there was actually a bunch of photos that came out on this version because I had the sun's head on. When I was taking photos with this one, there was basically two cameras, the two photos out of about an hour of actually, the camera of, of the photos actually looked like, uh, that wasn't completely blurred. So it works, it's cool. So this is a visualization of the height thing as well. Basically, the more dense the air is, the closer you're closer to the ground, and the farther you go up, the air becomes less dense. There is complicated math to do this. There, actually, the link on my website goes to a NOAA site that does all the calculations for me. I don't know how they do it, but it's magic. It takes, it takes my computer a while to figure it out. So this is version five, which made it around here somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's all it's all good. Uh, so this is the sense hat. 
and the Raspberry Pi, the power support, the power supply, and the camera. And I did take it out a couple of times already, where unfortunately the, the, the system crashed a lot. When I say the system crashed, I mean the piece of wood crashed on the earth a lot. <laughs> Because what, basically what happened was, was that the wind in this particular area, you really want to have enough wind so that as you're outside, you can hear the wind in your ears for about a minute, two minutes continuous. If you only hear it for a couple of seconds, your kite will go up, but then it will crash. So you really need to have that persistent um, amount of wind, which we really don't have that often in this area. So, uh, yeah, this is a very fun hobby to do up at other places where they have stronger wind. It's not quite so easy in the DC area, but it's still, it's still a fun process. So, if you start looking at kites, there's actually a ton of different kites. Uh, the Delta kite, it, uh, which is a single line kite, is, is basically the easiest kite to fly. It just goes up when there's wind. And there are other kites that will go up. Sometimes there are some kites that do better and stronger ones, but for an average day at the beach, this type of kite is, is really the one that works the best. And it's for 25 bucks, how can you go wrong? Uh, so I'm going to digress and talk about the laws here for a second. Um, you can see that teeny tiny word in the bottom there. That's sort of how I feel on the subject. But it's still important to talk about. Um, so this is a DC special flight rules area um, where we are, because actually we're a little bit north of the center Arrow. But regardless, there's a lot of rules in this area. Basically, you can't fly UAV, um, you can't fly model aircraft, um, there's a ton of restrictions as to what you can fly, but kites are actually allowed. Um, and yes, the FAA actually does encourage you to bring your kite to the Cherry Blossom Festival. So that's right in the center of the DCC Special Flight Rules area. So that's very cool. Um, as a side point, the kites were originally going to be prohibited in the DC Special Flight Rules area. However, the general public complained because they liked having the kite festival on the mall, and they also liked sledding on the mall. So it was sort of a nod to to general people just doing a little bit of recreation in the DC area, they lifted the laws to do that. So it's actually, that's actually a good thing that Congress did. Um, so here's some practical guidance. Um, if you're going to be flying kites, don't fly near your gravity point. It's right by DC Reagan, they actually have don't fly kites here sign, so just don't. Um, that's, it, but if you want to go there to watch planes, it's a perfect place to watch planes. They go right over you, growing. Um, if you're going to fly a kite, try to make sure that you get a kite length of about 500 feet or less. Um, they do sell on Amazon kite string that goes higher. But at that point, you start interfering with like uh, actual planes. So but try not to do that. Um, if the other thing is, is that on the FAA's website, particularly in this area, or actually, if you go on vacation and you just don't know the area, you may want to look at something called no towns. No towns are notice to airmen which basically is, is a way for the FAA to say, hey, there's going to be a kite show in this area, don't fly your private plane in this area for this period of time. You might as well look at it for kites. There's nothing, most likely, they won't say anything, but you never know. Um, 
The other thing is, is I can fly kites at night. I'm hoping to do it this vacation when I go to the Outer Banks. And basically, you can do that. You just have to attach some lights to your kite so people can see it from far away. And it may be a completely different experience, which is what I'm hoping for. But it'll be fun. So it's just one of those things where you want to make sure that you check that, that before you do sort of like any activity where you're where you could potentially harm anyone, just casually check out stuff. Um, I would also recommend actually the FAA's application called Before You Fly, which is a, a application designed for people that are recreationally flying UAVs. Just sort of gives you a sanity check that you're outside of the range of the airport, that there's nothing else going on that could possibly harm you. All those good things. So at this point, does anyone sort of have questions? Yes. Um, so I'm curious, have you ever thought about expanding your, your platform to the balloons as another mechanism for getting in the air? Balloons are prohibited in the DC Special Flight Rules area. Gotcha. However, in other places, I will be fine. The other thing is, is that with balloons, the amount of helium required to lift the platform is actually expensive. So, for like a, a, for a random reason, I looked at this. This is going to work. And to light, to basically lift something that weighs about a, like a real laptop computer for four hours, it would cost about six, five hundred dollars for to have a balloon lifted at a certain height. So you can do it. It's just expensive. Um, and at, at, when you reach the five hundred dollar points, there's better options. Can have uh, you could either use a UAV or possibly do a commercial, commercial with private aviation. And the costs at some point sort of become negligible. So I have thought about it. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine there's a stability issue with that too, since you're not keeping it in tension between the ground. And yes. Yeah. There. Yeah. There. Every platform has their own. But yes, all this information is, is linked from my, from my website too, that actually points to kite laws, DC special flight rule area laws, all these, all these, all these things. Anyone else have questions? Yes. Hey, too. Um, when is it actually live in the South of Michigan? Yep. So that, if you know, there's a sense of the frame itself versus, I guess, it's the configuration of meaning, for example, Yes. that my thought was that 
it's sort of hard on the ground to sort of see what's going up there to know which way to take the photo. You could do that. I haven't gone to that point yet. So basically, it's always looking going through your arm, shaking this and how high I am, and if it looks good, enough, yes, I'm on the ground. Yep. And it's always moving that. So it's not, I guess, you should be always taking one minute. Now you're taking one minute in interval if it's good enough right now. At this point, I'm taking one of about 1 in 20 seconds or so. Yeah. Give it, give, give it, because basically the way I did the shaking thing was that um, every five seconds wait after taking a photo because you need, want this platform to just sort of move to a different location. And then, um, start a counter at a thousand and keep counting down until the platform is stable, take a photo, and then just repeat it that way. So it's, it's the, when I was taking it about every minute, I had about 40 different photos to go through. The previous time where I was taking it every minute with a sensor, I had about 150 photos to go through. And yeah, it's, it's a large number, and sometimes, even even with that, sometimes the color is things that doesn't work. So what I'm going to try to do additionally uh, when I fly it uh, in a couple of weeks is to attach a Canon camera that will just sort of every minute take a photo as well, and that will just without attach the computer, which I tried, but then Blue Magic spoke. Um, so, uh, but every matter so we'll take a photo and hopefully with a different sensor what better photo might happen. That's sort of where I am with that. There's a bunch of different ways I could improve improve this and when I'm thinking of that, I'm not quite sure exactly where I am with everything right now. It's yes. So uh I believe you're kind of but I see that you write like the last edition of like a basic web page is the idea of moving forward like one of your Yes, there. Uh, that, that definitely can can be done. Like the art, the, well, there's a couple of things. So as we move up in the air, because a lot of Wi-Fi access points are pointing down, it actually becomes a little bit less noisy. So you should actually be able to have a Wi-Fi connection from the ground to the sky reasonably easily. So it should be done. I just haven't gone that far because the other thing is is that plugging things in by USB to a platform that's up in the air already scares me a little. I'm I haven't quite done that yet, but the, the plan is there in the future. And how big is the platform that you're resting on? Like, I, I think if you ever run into an issue where you're worried about storage, I don't know the quality of the the photos. I don't know this it, it, It's a five megapixel photo, so it's about a hundred k for each, or seven hundred k for each shot. So 700 or on 32 gig cards is not a, it's not a okay. the battery will, will run at first. So, yeah. Any other questions or? Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot.